Cool. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome along to another one of these photo speed live sessions. Uh, I'm here with Tim. Tim, how are you doing? Not too bad. Good. Yeah, it's not so bad. It was sunny, but it's pouring with rain now here. So, um... oh, there you go. It's still, <laughs> still, still sunny on the Costa del Dorset, as yeah. it always is. Sunshine and happiness down here. Um, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna talk today, aren't we, Tim? About black and white. Now, obviously, this is a huge topic, right? But we're going to yeah, try and absolutely pick out huge, certain things. So, what, what I mean, we're going to talk a little bit about file prep. We're going to talk a bit about paper choice. We're going to talk a bit about um, black and white modes. But just, Tim, I know uh, you've got a video coming next week on the Photospeed YouTube channel in detail about the mode side of things. Just can you give us a sneak preview of that? Yeah, so what I've done is I've taken the Epson P700 and the Canon uh, Pro 300 and put them side by side to each other and just had a print on on both printers, the same image, just to see um, how they both perform, to be honest, and if I could see any difference between the two and if any of their kind of marketing kind of speak was true, should we say. I always like dis disproving the marketing speak, but just kind of having a look at it and um, – what I found out and we're going to discuss a couple of little bits I found out which is fantastic but I mean they're both amazing printers I have to say to start with um, yeah. but there is slight differences and there was one big big shock for myself anyway because I've always been an advocate of custom profiles and things which I know we're going to talk on later what mode to use so um, we'll move on to that a little bit later but yeah it's been um, it was it was it was a really good exercise for myself anyway just to have a look and see which is the best way to print black and whites and things but yeah that'll be all yeah. drop in and it's really good Wh whichever printer is you choose well that's coming next week so every thursday on youtube uh photo speed are releasing uh, a video either a tutorial a conversation with a photographer or a live one like this and actually in july we're going to just ramp that up a bit we've got extra videos we're going to be putting out so subscribe stay subscribed to the youtube channel for all the latest videos coming to help you with your printing we we picked black and white and it's you know there's a limit to what we can cover today but i think we're going to answer some of the common questions that i've had asked of me when on workshops and tim obviously working uh, full-time with, with the photo speed tech side of things i'm sure he runs into black and white questions all Ooh. the time because we've had it tim haven't we where where uh, people are printing at home with various printer types various papers profiles or no profiles and you know the old adage the old thing you want is whatever you're seeing on the screen you kind of want to come out as close as it can do on the print so just before we even get into the images, and by the way, we've got a few images we're going to talk about today and, and why we process certain bits of them or what we need to think about with soft proofing and then how we print them. But it, are there common problems that you see, Tim? And, and are they to do with, you know, casts on the paper or are they to do with uh, files not quite being prepped right? Are they to do with inks? What, what, what crops up from a black and white point of view? It's usually, because of course with black and white, we're there's no color so we've kind of taken away one of the big causes of things which can be screen casts and looking different on the screen to the print and things as in color wise however it could we can have issues where the shadows block or the the highlights blow out a little bit because the the biggest thing is your screen's usually too bright um so it can always cause the the blacks perhaps to to block a little bit so things print a little bit darker actually coming out of the printer is the is the big one and that's usually the screen is just a little bit too bright so we just need to open up those shadows a little bit and bring bring things down a little bit and we wouldn't necessarily see that in a in a soft proof situation on the screen which is why i'm a big advocate of actually kind of doing little test prints and and kind mm -hmm. of doing doing that kind of things but soft proof can help us uh, along the way yeah another thing is differences between like matte papers and and gloss papers as well and that can cause a little bit of a um problems for us however both are amazing for black and white printing i think so um yeah yeah and we might get into that about choice of paper with a couple of the images that we've got as examples so um if by the way if everyone's anyone watching along if you have any questions at any point about either the things we're talking about as we go or just generic to black and white printing uh, just pop them in the comments and uh, Tim will do his best to keep his mm. eye on those and, and sort of ask them as we go along. Um, it's it's the thing I do see people struggling with a little bit. So hopefully we'll help you a little bit today and answer some common queries. So Tim, do you want to just share, uh, if we can do a share on the screen here on 
I'll talk about a On couple of these yours, images. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 Fab. So, um, yeah, we've got, I just picked out two uh, images and I think uh, we've got a couple of other examples of, of how black and white prints can be optimized later using different modes on Epson and Canon and whether that's actually better or worse and whether you should be using the profile or the mode or all that kind of thing we'll get into. But I just wanted to very quickly talk about these two because they're two images that uh, have, well, one, this one in particular, uh, is, it doesn't seem like it should be difficult to print and it isn't difficult to print per se, but the challenge is always getting the image out of the printer as you sort of envisage it as the artist, I suppose. And there are lots of sort of dull, you know, gray areas in this, if you will. It's a waterfall sort of abstract, if anyone wants to know or cares. Uh, but if we look at the sort of inst um, the histogram, I'm used to saying Instagram there, so the histogram. <laughs> <laughs> you look at the histogram uh, up on the on the top right, uh, it's very, um, I very purposefully not, not pushed, yeah. yeah, all this data over here. Uh, so these kind of highlight areas are not massively highlighted. They are quite soft in a way, you know, they're not too pingy and bright and we've got plenty of space in the black. So this is kind of the, the edited version. And what we just wanted to touch on first was, let's say you've, you've edited your image. This isn't an editing session, so we're not going to go into that. But if you, if you have the edit that you're happy with, what do you do next if, if you're going to print it? And Tim and I, I think, work maybe slightly differently and i think that's quite interesting because i would always at this point um just click soft proofing down here if you're in lightroom and i would use the profile box up here hope everyone can see that up here in the top right i would be looking at that histogram and how it changes depending on the paper uh, that i'm going to print it on and i would make potentially a proof copy accordingly uh, so what I mean by that is, if you watch every, and it's difficult because of um, the histogram being quite small in the top corner for everyone, but if you just watch that histogram now change, you can see it just jumped a little. So I would know from this that depending on the paper I'm choosing, if, if we're example, we're using this gloss art fiber as an example here, I know if I really want those blacks to be quite dense and, and dark and as black as they can be, I would potentially push the blacks down in this in this proof copy edit. Whereas, if I was going to go off and print it on the uh, on the platinum etching, I know that I don't have a great deal more to push these. It can't take a great deal more, otherwise it'll just start blocking out. And I think Tim, if we can just bring you in here for a sec, mm. um, and maybe we can bring out yeah, Fab. Um, I, I think we both think this is the best way to use soft proof, isn't it? Rather than believing yeah. necessarily what's showing in the image of the, you know what I'm saying? And certainly that simulate paper and ink button, we both dislike that. <laughs> that I, I call it the foggy button, yeah. It just, right. just makes it foggy. And if you try and edit it with that on to make it look any decent, you'll just come out with this horribly overcast kind of contrasty kind of... Japanese photography of the 60s kind of look which is absolutely fantastic <laughs> if that's what you're going for but if, if it's not then you've had it um yeah I I I, I kind of I, I always tell people to use the soft briefing as almost a data tool so like you said you're looking at the um the histogram here kind of the data of the picture um also um it'll flash um blue and red if you've got any highlights or shadows kind of blocking out as well which is great um so that's, yeah, that's I mean, another thing to look at um in color that's especially like the gamut mm -hmm. warnings are good in the soft proof aren't they because yeah. you might find if you had a color image here with, with loads of red or yellow or something in it and you put it on a certain paper that paper might suddenly not be able to cope with all that red or that blue and it would show you that gamut warning up here which which would then mean maybe we could talk about this tim it would then mean your choice of um perceptual or relative might be interesting yeah. as well because of how it would that, how that does it change would, hmm. yeah and how it would try and cope with that out of gamut situation on the on the paper yeah i think that's another thing it could use I, I always think that adobe have just kind of left this feature and a lot of other software they kind of it came in how many years ago in photoshop and lightroom and it hasn't really been pushed and updated I don't, i'm not sure if they can to be honest um 
I, I always came from the dark room, see, so I always kind of think, well, I, I still think in dark room terms, which is great. Um, I, I think anyway that um, I can. Um, you think in test strips and things like that. The only problem with that is it uses paper, but if you do little tests, I think it's um, that's the way. Get it as close as you can on the screen. I think if you get it eighty-five, ninety percent close on the screen, you're doing really well. I, I think. Um, yeah. Then, so yeah. yeah. So Tim's kind of alluding to the fact that potentially, and I, I, I do this as well. We kind of hard proof, don't we, Tim? So yeah. if, if we've done our soft proofing and we've thought about, okay, well, using the profile, and we'll come on to whether you should use the profile or the um, or the photo mode or the print mode in your printer, depending on the quality mm. of your printer. But let's say you're using the um, the uh, profile mode here. Like I say, we just check, we think about the brightness, the darkness, and we, and we would then maybe make a proof copy. I'm not going to do that right now. You'd get that pretty close, and then you'd take it off to the print module. And I think both of us, I won't go there just yet because I want to talk quickly about the other image before we do, but both of us would then, uh, I don't know about you, Tim, but I tend to use an A3, and I mock it up on the A3 quite small, and I would I would print a couple of versions of it on the A3 uh, so we, you do that as a hard proof, wouldn't you? You would literally print yes. maybe a couple yeah. of different versions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just do a little contact sheet with different, just print one and think, oh, I'm just going to open the shadows up and just put another point in. Beauty with Lightroom is you can create a virtual copy as you're doing this as well. And you can just click along and you can just create it on the same sheet. You just keep putting the same sheet of paper in the printer. Yeah. Maybe we could even show that in the print module in, mm. in a minute yeah. as well. So just before we get into that print module area, um, and I think we'll use Lightroom, even though I've commonly found myself printing more in the Canon professional print and layout software mm. recently, which surprised me. But when I got the Canon Pro 300, um, <laughs> it just seemed to work quite nicely with that. Just wanted to point out this other image we were going to talk about was um, this one. This is a, a really amazing Iron Age fort in uh, Dorset, which is sometimes misty but rarely but when you get it like that it's lovely conditions anyway um it was shot on on a very filmic kind of a grainy setting so you can see there's a lot of grain in the image i want that that's good that's what i want to be there and it's i would say this is what I, kind of shades of gray image as opposed to black and white high contrast obviously there's areas of tonal contrast with depth and dark but you know what i'm saying and so in this I, the reason i picked this one is i think paper choice is super important and um, um, let's just talk very briefly about that before we get into the print module and, mm. and and the ways of printing but you and i tim i think we both are more on the matte side is that fair to say yeah i think yeah i i, I think I, I like the matte side definitely um even for portraiture work and things like that when i was when i was shooting weddings it was always on um i thought smooth cotton was fantastic for weddings it worked really really well um but i think I, I really like but i do really like platinum glass art fiber as well um it depends on the image to be honest i always think if it's got a really quite a lot of contrast in there uh quite a deep black then the the glossier papers or the semi-gloss papers work really well like the brighters and um platinum glass art fiber and legacy that we do um but like for an image like this it would be i i be matte, matte all day i think and um yeah for me, for me it'd be um um platinum etching but i don't know what you you chose but... platinum etching yeah no yeah. i did and i think why i suppose why is what would help people is that is that texture mm. is it perhaps that, yeah. that sort of tactile nature of the image and and the print kind of matching from that sense yeah would you agree when you see this mm. you know we both thought that why do we think yeah. it, i suppose is the question i think yeah, for, for for me, I always say people when I'm talking about um, paper choice and things, it's about the tone of the image, um, not so much the colour or contrast, a little bit, but it's more what's going on in the image. Is it a soft image? Not in not in focus terms, but it's kind of like you've kind of got the lovely soft fog coming over and the mist coming over here and things, and also the, the like you said, the tone and um, also the texture of the image as well, because you've kind of got that filmic kind of grain going on in this picture as well which would lend really nicely to a, a kind of fine texture of the paper as well. Um, which, which yeah, I think lovely. that's that's key, isn't it? That The texture type even, you know, we've talked about mm -hmm. uh, texture. You, if you get the platinum etching, it's quite fine. If you get the sort of natural textured or the uh, NST, it, it's, a, it's a thicker 
texture, isn't it? It's a, it's a broader thing. And then you have to be a bit careful with that, I think, depending on what type the image yeah. is, especially if you've got areas of, of white or areas of sky. But but final thing I would say on that, Tim, is when, when we look at prints, um, a couple of things, and then we'll, let's get into the print module hmm. bit, and, and maybe we can talk about those. Yeah, yeah. I think what we're all a bit guilty of as photographers is we sort of get a print, um, um, I can't show you, but we look at it like this, like right close to it in, in a room with bad lighting. Now, we should, <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying personally, we should not do that. You should always be, you know, a good distance from it. And I think there is a general rule of thumb, Tim, I've seen you mention about the, in terms of the size it's of the, the image. the longer that, size. The longest, yeah. the, the longest side of the image is the minimum distance you should view it at. Yeah. So, and, I mean, I'm guilty of it as well. You print off an absolutely massive, like 44 by whatever, 30 print off the printer, and you get up to it and go, is it sharp? And you get yeah. right up to it. It's, but well, I think where, well, where obviously trips, all mine are, but. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's a given. I think where that yeah. trips people up, though, is I've seen people look at textured things too close mm. and they go, oh, it's too textured. But actually, if you, if you look at it at the arm's length, the texture is not as obvious, yeah. but it actually adds something really beautiful to the image. Mm -hmm. And the final thing I would say on this is use something like this, which are the Kaiser desktop lights. Now I have a couple of these, and if I'm ever doing sort of serious prints that I'm gonna use for something, I'll have them either side of the table. I've done a video on this, it's on our YouTube, on the Photospeed YouTube channel, about how I use them for print checking. And it's great because it actually just gives you a very balanced uh, they're both they're both yeah. balanced to the same temperature obviously and if you have one on either side for an a3 or an a4 you then really see what's going on with the print because in a normal you know lit room toxic room you get daylight coming in from another side you can get a bit confused about if there's a cast or if there's a something weird tonally going on so i would say if you're serious about that do get those lights a couple of those lights from focus speed get them on your desk and then you can really see the difference between paper types, especially mm. if you're comparing from the test pack or something like that. Um, but Tim, let, let's get into the printing. Because um, Yeah, I was going to say, actually, before we move on, you mentioned about Canon print, professional print and layout. Yeah. Did you know about the test print hard proof function in there? Oh, I know we, did didn't, I know? we didn't discuss this beforehand. So no, the did I, print, do I know? it does uh let's have a look do i know that no i don't think i know that so if we just bring it up quickly i, I will show you they That's... hide it away i i do not know why canon don't shout about this so anybody use canon printers um oh, that's neat. Know, um it kind of does this for you if you go in to the color settings and scroll all the way down to the bottom uh there it is it's called pattern print oh yeah yeah click on it's that it. And then it kind of does, if anyone, if everyone can see that, um, it, it adjusts the, um, I think it's just done the color in there. You can set it so it'll just do the contrast and brightness for you. And it will, and you oh, can yeah. just do it so um, it will just set all these for you. And it will, it will do just brightness and darkness and you, you can print it off and have a look at the contrast and, and see, see. How your shadows are and things like that so it kind of does it for you which is quite neat it um That's saves cool, you yeah. saves you sitting there and doing loads of kind of little prints and things um but yeah that's that's super helpful I'm, i'll have a play with that i've, I've seen it but I, I was a bit scared i didn't want to press it but um yeah no you can change the modes and things you can move them all around so it's a bit more and you, yeah there's loads of options in there so the best thing to do is have a play with it and kind of have a look at it but i don't know why they don't shout about it because it seems great I, I don't know why lightroom I, I, well, not that I know of. Someone could probably correct me. I haven't seen it yet, but mm. <laughs> well, I've I might done. try and I might try yeah. and do a little video on that for the mm. channel. Then once I master it, I mean, I just while we're in here, Tim, uh, mm. we we could just um, start this conversation about the um, the color modes versus ICC profiles because um, mm. if if you're in if you're using the Canon professional print and layout software, and obviously this is just for Canons and Epson, I'm not sure what the situation is, but with Canon, yeah. you've got a choice if you're in here, you can use the ICC profile, which would be one you've got from PhotoSpeed or a generic one you've downloaded for the printer and the paper, or you can use their black and white photo mode. Uh, and that overrides the ICC profile. And this is yes. a good segue, I think, Tim, to what you've been looking at 
with Epson yeah. and Canon. And now, the, is... the, yeah, so this is what I was comparing between the two and which one gave a more neutral print because I think we had a live uh, a few months ago, wasn't it, with Dom from Epson about um, Epson, the new range of Epson printers and kind of what they were doing and things, and advanced black and white modes and things. So we, I wanted to have a look at this because Dom made the claim that it was kind of we could it would give more neutral print. And I've always been an advocate of um, custom profile, profile it to an inch and an inch of its life, and then you should be, should be fine. Whereas what Epson say is the advanced black and white mode will be more neutral. Now, I was kind of thinking, oh, wow, I don't know. I'd, well, I'm, I'm always up for being kind of um, proved wrong. So I, I thought I'd give this a... Um, I'd, I'd give this a try so yeah so let me just share my screen a second because cool. i just want to bring up a picture here of two prints i did so we have here um on the left hand side i don't know if you can see this that's come up isn't it? yeah cool yes so on the left hand side here i have a print from a profile and now this is a profile i i did actually profile within an inch of its life so i mean i i refined this profile i optimized it and used uh, all the tools at my disposal and then the one on the left is actually from the black and white mode um this is from the p700 by the way using their advanced black and white mode the one on now, the right, Tim, sorry, is that? The sorry, one the, the right. one on the right, yeah. The yep. one on the right is the um, advanced black and white mode. Now, there is a slight difference. Now, I don't know if that was my dodgy photography here or what, but there is a slight. I mean, put them side by side, you can see a slight difference between the two. If you look at them singly under light and things, to be honest, I, I couldn't really see... In, in normal kind of real world tests, I couldn't really see um, any difference at all in there. So what I did was I increased the saturation on both of them to see if that if that would help anything or bring anything in. Now, the one on the left is the it's the profile. As you can see, there is there is actually kind of a a tint going on in there and something whereas the one on the right actually kept it, it, it kind of kept itself more less kind of more neutral mm. so i have to say i was proved wrong there by epson um i'm kind of happy because i'm going to get more neutral prints however <laughs> i yeah i just like wow it actually does what it says on the tin and I was I'm not shocked, obviously. They, they spend a lot of money developing these printers, so <laughs> it should yeah, do. Yeah. But it was really good to know that it actually is doing that. In a real kind of, as I said, in, in a real-world situation, no one is going to see that. That was pushed to the extreme, should I say. Mm. Um, kind of, I really pushed it up. The other thing Epson have introduced as well, because I know we talked about Canon printers and what they were doing, and... I know you've got the Pro 300, so we can talk a little bit more about that as well. Yeah. But what Canon have made a big thing about, and especially in black and white printing, is this new carbon black mode they have, or black overcoat mode. Both on are Epson. kind of the same. On, on Epson, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So they're kind of the same, kind of same thing. And it's a setting in there that you would have, um, you can tick a box, and it basically goes over the black points. Um, the blacks in the picture and doubles them up effectively. It uses your light black, your light grey, loads and loads and loads. So um, that goes down. I mean, you can watch it going down. It, it's that quick. It goes down <laughs> and uses it. It's, okay. um, so I, again, I, I, I that being being as sceptical British as I am, <laughs> I suppose I thought, is this just a thing they're saying? And I tested it. It does do what it says on the tin as well. Um, the bottom strip of black here is without the black overcoat and the one at the top, as you can see, it's, all, it's, it's kind of a completely Quite different colour. It? <laughs> yeah. it is a lot. Um, this is only on gloss and luster papers, this does, so um, it doesn't do it on matte papers, so it doesn't need it. Um, so, yeah, um, I think okay. it's, it definitely does what it says on the tin, so should we say so. 
Yeah, I do apologise. My children have just come home from school. So. That's all right. They're allowed. That's no problem. He's he's a real person, everyone, family and all. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think I think what's interesting, Tim, is um, you mentioned about, and maybe we'll get into the print mode in Lightroom in a sec because I think it's worth showing people a couple of things just to be mm. uh, aware of. Maybe uh, I don't mind doing that, or if you want to jump in there, uh, yeah, we can no. we can sort that out. Um, what you you mentioned about the Canon. I have been using the Pro 300, and uh, anyone who's watching, I've done a full series of videos on setting up the Pro 300 in in uh, on your computer on a Mac, uh, making your first print, doing black and white settings on it. All, uh, so there's a series of four or five videos I've done for Photospeed, which are on the YouTube channel. So if you're watching this uh, and you're interested in getting a decent A3 Plus printer, there there are Epson and Canon options. I I have had, like I said, a Canon. I've been using it. What the reason why I'm talking about this is their black and white mode, their, their um, I'm not current, I can't remember what they call it now, sorry. The Canon black and white mode that I pointed out before on the professional print layout software. I had a query and someone asked on, on one of the videos, well, do you use that or should I use a profile? Exactly that question we've been talking Ooh. about, Tim. And I replied saying, I think you're safe for using the profile. But since then, having done three or four months of it, I actually... I actually now use the the black and white mode all the time. I I would always say use a profile. I just was always yeah. say because it would. I in I don't know if it's just these new modular printers. I mean, I have tested the older, the older the previous models of all these printers as well, and I think I, I was never quite happy. I always used to think the Canons were a little bit magenta, and the um, the um, the Epsons were a little bit cooler, so they're a little bit bluer in kind of the tone as well. However, now I do by doing this test as well and kind of really looking at it, I think that um yeah, they've 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 upped their game, should we say. So yeah. um, do do we yeah. think there are do we think that's any less efficient though? I I've I've always thought using the profile is the most efficient delivery of the ink, so you're not overusing ink. Do, do you know what I mean? I don't know. Um, no, I don't. I yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, no. Okay. No, I, not no. I don't. I wouldn't think so. Um, it, but we're probably using knowing. the profile. The probably using the profile is going to be use a little less ink because it's being it's measuring how much ink it actually needs to put down and things possibly, possibly. Yeah. But we're probably talking, I don't know, a tenth of a mil or something possibly. So small amounts. Um, yeah, but it all adds up, doesn't it? And it's expensive stuff. I'm one of the most expensive liquid in the world, isn't it? So it's kind of yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's good job. Good job. We're not running the cars on it. So, <laughs> yeah. would you mind? Do you mind sharing your print module? No. Say? Let me um, have a look. Uh, and then what we could maybe talk about is um, we talked about that. Um, uh, oh, uh, that's the only problem is we can't see your side panels, Tim, can we? Ah, uh, let me just, um, I can solve that. Let me just stop to share a sec. But yeah, it's, um, it was really interesting in that test, I think. It was um, definitely um, surprised me a lot um, in what yeah, we that kind of looking at. That video is going to be coming out in more detail very soon. So yes. we'll yeah. keep an eye on that. And the, the Canon, and then... Uh, we won't give it away, Tim. But then he compares no. the cat, the Canon, and the Epson in their modes to see uh, yeah. about the true side truest by side. Part. Yeah, but you've got to we'll wait for which, that. Um, yeah, <laughs> see which what's the um, what's the verdict on that. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, it was a tight one. I'll, I'll say that. But yeah, okay. okay. So when you're when you're in here, um, yeah. One thing, one thing actually, I was going to ask you just as a general print query and if, by the way if there's anyone watching if you have any questions that you want to know just ping them in the comments and we'll try and grab them um but in terms of uh ppi or, or, or dpi i should say tim in terms of if we're printing uh to an a3 to, to either that canon pro 300 or the epson what what would your general advice be about choosing the correct dpi there because again this is something i hear different things about so i'm interested to see what you say in in DPI, DP, so, yeah. So we're we're printing, yeah. Yeah. Dots so per inch, yeah. The dots per inch. I now I did. I have actually run a little test, but I'm going to try and do a video on this as well, and actually like a real world test on if we could see the difference between like 1440 is like the standard 
and then the um is it 5,600 and something, um, 40, um, and see a difference. To be honest, I don't think I, I would really, really see the difference in there. Um, but again, I, I, I haven't quite taken it all in and done the test and thing at the minute, so I will be, will be doing that and, and kind of having a look at what to set the printer on if we just set it on high or if we put it on highest um and yeah. the difference between the two um and especially we've got that black overcoat and the black and white modes and things like that i i don't think our eye would see the difference i've watched a few videos out there as well trying to research this and things like that and their tests have kind of said that it wouldn't you wouldn't really see your eye can't actually see it um and in and in terms then on and in terms then on the PPI when we're in the mm. when we're in the print thing, do you, any preference with that with Canon or Epson or printer model mode? Does it matter? Um, What's your feeling on that? Well, the the Canons. Well, three hundred is the minimum. I would always say put it at three hundred. You'd be absolutely fine with the Epsons. You can actually go up to three sixty. Um, but if you'd see the difference, is arguable again. So usually, to be honest, I just leave it at 300, and that usually is absolutely fine. Um, I usually, to be honest, with the print sharpening, I usually leave that off because I like to do extra sharpening in the develop module because you've just got a little bit more extra control in there. Yeah, um, me too. And if you can always have 16-bit output selected, it's going to give you a better gradient in your um, – in your skies, especially like in here as well. You're not going to get any steps or anything going on in there. It's just going to smooth things a little bit for you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So just as a final few thoughts, Tim, we, we touched a little bit on paper choice, didn't we? But we didn't spend ages on that. It's, I t just, I'll tell you why, everyone. It's really difficult for us to show you that through this medium, through, through the live stream thing. We're going to try and do a couple of videos maybe where we use, uh, where we have a bit more of a controlled light environment, mm. where we can show you some close-up stuff of the same image on different paper types. But but what I would say to people is this: that PhotoSpeed do the um, test packs, and they are so useful. I, I order and I reorder those because not not only just for checking profiles and things, but if you have an image you really like or you want to start printing on those image, uh, you know, particular images on different papers. If you get the test pack, uh, there's various types you can get in terms of the signature ones, the, the photo ones, the gloss ones. If you get those and then you use the photo mode, the black and white mode on your Canon or on your Epson, you don't have to go off and find all the separate profiles for them. Yeah, you can just, uh, that's what I found anyway. You can just use the mode on, on the printer. And then when you choose the paper that you want, you can then get the custom ICC profile done for that yeah. one. And that's no problem. But with regards to choosing the right paper, people often ask me, well, what's the best one for black and white? And it's just an impossible question, as we've sort of alluded to, because mm. it totally depends on the type of black and white image. You mentioned, Tim, a few things with regards matching to the, the kind of mood of the image, the, the texture of the image, you know, and that's it, isn't it? If you've got a really contrasty, you know, super dark black and super white whites, maybe let's mm. talk about that. Let's say you had an image like that what sorts of the photo speed paper might you think about? So you've got really deep, deep blacks and super bright, you know, whites and not much in between. So it's that kind of histogram that looks like that, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, I what might suit the, that? I would think the platinum gloss art fiber would be fantastic. It's higher white point than the brighter. So for really contrasty images, it works really well. Um, and for me, it reminds me of that fiber-based darkroom paper. So it's got that little bit of um, texture a little bit. Um, so so it would, yeah, I'm trying to think of matte paper as well. Uh, actually, smooth. Cut, NST, smooth, or... smooth. Yeah, NST would do it. That would be really good. But the black in the smooth cotton is just, you fall into it. Um, it takes a little bit of work. It's, it's not not it's not the easiest paper to print on sometimes depending on the image. however for really contrast images it works really well and you get this really deep black in it as well really yeah. really um yeah uh, and maybe the the gloss i mean as i say i rarely use gloss but i did actually just for the purposes of today i did a couple of those images in in gloss just to see how they were and there's something quite attractive when you have that 
it's really difficult to show you on here so I'm, I'm, it's just good especially it's just going to reflect everywhere um but you, they, there is something about the blacks in a gloss which can be really really attractive i think you just have to think about where it's going to display how you're going to display it you know those are the issues but so okay well we if we're talking about that super high contrast what about maybe something that's a little more um you know mid-toned a little more um you know where we're not too worried about the super black point or the, mm. having a very bright highlight you know maybe that platinum etching maybe on the mat is, is a mm. nice thing to yeah go that'd for. be nice or the brighter as well brighter just, yeah just, uh, it, it, it's so slight you'd have to have them side by side and stare at them for half an hour or something to see it but it's just that little bit warmer um and it just that that suits it really well um, and that's why i suppose brighter is kind of our most popular paper really because it's it just mm. it, it, it handles that really really well so um but yeah and, and good for color but most people don't always mm. think about brighter for color but it is nice for color I, just yeah, one thing no, beautiful uh i want to ask and then maybe we'll wrap up in a couple of minutes tim yeah we've you know, got some questions as well actually so we'll... okay cool so let me ask this very quickly and then we'll get to the questions from yeah, the viewers. No, thank cool. you thank you if you're still with us everyone um <laughs> the warmth of the paper is important I, i'll tell you when mm. you find this out is when you start putting it with a mount i've, I've run into this you you, you mm. print and it looks you know the white the the especially in something like the waterfall where or where you've got snow, where you you want that to be white, if that makes sense, without being burnt out white. But you know what I'm saying. You don't want it to be a cast in that. Um, so, what you know, what's the easiest way to find out about that? If people are unsure, can they ask you guys? Because yeah, sometimes, yeah. if if you put it next to a nice white mount, suddenly you realise, oh wow, there's quite a lot of warmth in that paper, or there's quite mm. a lot of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I normally tell people to, if as a, a really really basic kind of general rule if it's quite high contrast probably go for a, a whiter point of paper and if it's a bit more you've got more gray in the image perhaps go for a little bit warmer paper a simple example of that would be going so if it's a bit more even and proper really i suppose you've got the nice exposure in there between the blacks and whites and grays all in between perhaps go for a brighter if it's a bit more contrasty perhaps go for the platinum gloss art fiber if it's a little bit a little bit um a higher white point in there perhaps but obviously those rules are there to be broken so it's kind of as well that's why it makes it so tricky doesn't it kind of when we're talking yeah. about this but those hard those hard proofs on on the different papers in the test mm. packs that, that for me that's the way to to do it like we've said but do you want to get to a couple of questions tim do you want to have a yeah question yeah anything there? Yeah, I mean, Paul's just asked about the, um, he asked this early on, actually, about the incompatibility between Lightroom and Big Sur. Now, I had a problem the other day on my own system here, my separate system that I do all my editing on and things, and it was on Big Sur. Now, I had a problem, I don't know if anyone else has had this, between the library or display um, tab and the print module if you click on the display tab it displays this lovely contrasty really punchy image if you click on the print tab it goes all muddy and horrible and there's a difference between the two now that's caused by the graphics card acceleration in there so you have to turn off in your preferences turn off the performance and the graphics card acceleration and it solves that now, I don't know if that's a – I haven't tried it yet, Paul, but I don't know if that would be a fix for that as well with the colour casts and things. I know I've had to reprofile on Big Sur. I don't know if it's just in, interpreting profiles slightly differently in there as well, and the drivers as well is the big thing. Um, mm. But, yeah, I mean, Capture One's different as well in Big Sur. But that's another – that's a whole other issue. Yeah, so. let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, yeah, but um, – yeah, that's fine. So, um, Roger has said, um, yeah, about the recommended advanced black and white modes. That was always our, um, so that photos been always advanced. That was always our stance, to be honest, until I did this test. I would always, I would always reckon, recommend custom profiles. And, and then these, I have to say, that test I did on the extreme, I don't think, to be honest, if I sent you those two prints and jumbled them up, and didn't put any writing on them or anything. I don't know if you'd tell the difference between the two. Um, it was only when I really up the, I had to go pretty far on the saturation to really up up those and go through them as well. 
Hmm. But um, yeah, I've got a question about a printer actually on here as well. Someone who's got the um, the XP um, fifteen thousand, which is actually a die based machine. Now these die based machines have uh, actually really, really got really, really good at printing black and whites. It was always like a bit of a um, Achilles heel of them, I suppose, that they didn't really have any black it, uh, sorry, gray inks in there and. It, it always had to try and have a bit of color in there, even if you're using the black and white modes and things. However, the new printers, I have to say, are fantastic. Even from um, from from Epson and Canon, both, I've been really impressed. And the difference is they've put a gray ink in there now. Um, I had the new is it the ET seventy five fifty seventy five or eighty eight the new brand new one over with the scanner and things and all that the other week. And I've done I've done a video on it as well. It should be coming out soon, but it was absolutely brilliant. Um, I did black and whites on it. I did uh, color on it as well. And they were really neutral. They were absolutely perfect. So no, you don't need a really kind of top top printer. It just needs to have that. I think the thing you need to look out for is a printer with a gray ink. As long as it's got that, you should be pretty, pretty good and pretty well. Um, Tim, is it fair to say stuff. that that in that situation, that's when having yeah. your screen calibrated and an ICC profile would actually help you though. If you don't Ooh. have, you know, if, if you, if you yeah. don't have all the, like the 10 ink systems, as long as you've got that calibration and a decent profile, you're going to be as good as you can get from that. Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's when the profile will come in a little bit. If you haven't got that gray ink in your printer and things like that, if you have your custom profile, that is going to give you, I think at that point, I, th I think the profile would win out. Yeah, I definitely. Think. Yeah, because I, 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 I one of the first A3 printers I had was just a Canon six five five zero, which was fine. But uh, without the profiles and without the calibrate screen, it, it it wasn't always true to what I was hoping for black and white. Um, but it could do it with a good profile, which is free, obviously, when you buy the paper from mm. Photo Speed. So that's not an expense. You, it just comes when you get your paper. Um, Tim, any any other questions before we? Um, just about the wide. Um... Merit has just said, um, do you have an opinion on the Epson wide body printers like the 4900 against the newer, smaller ones? Um, no, I mean, the older Epson printers are really good, I have to say. They, um, some they go on and on and on. Um, but no, I, I think the as it's a bigger, wide, wide format printer, um, I think it takes a role as well. Um, I think that the head technology was a little bit ahead in the, in the bigger Epsons. So I think that it'd be absolutely fine. Um, and the thing to do with all these, like I've, I've, I've run these tests is to just perhaps print a little print on like we're, pr we're proofing and hard proof and hard proofing ooh, is to um, kind of have a look, just, just print one off using the profile, print one off using the, advanced black and white mode or the black and white mode in canon and and see what you prefer I, I i promise i won't take offense if you prefer the advanced black and white mode over my custom profile i just want you to get the best prints mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> of course, just is, like... you need the profile for any color work anyway mm. so you, yes. need, you still yeah. need the profile that's the point um but on black and white it's interesting yeah paul's other question sorry was oh uh, it's just about the q image as well um because I know, Paul, we've been we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks, actually, a week on and off, haven't we? About the panic Q image is working fine in Big Sur, isn't it? I haven't actually used Q image, I'm afraid, so I can't really cast no, a no, comment no. on that. I know that Capture One is doing funny things, um, but yeah, um, which Capture One's always done funny things when it comes to printing, so we won't go there. Hopefully, no. Faze aren't watching. Um, but yes, so but um, and also, do we do we need to buy a full? um full pack of paper for the free trip it's a rough rule yes we say we like pet but i'm more than happy to profile a, a few out of the test pack for you that's no problem at all say so the maximum is six kind of thing we can do that for you i do i do just say to people just don't send in the whole test pack i suppose um, yeah. <laughs> because it, it does take a while for me to go through the 30 odd papers that are in there so um there's a slight I delay on there so I think the trick is sometimes it's worth just printing out some images that aren't crazy weird to print, if you know what I mean, on, on the three or four that pique your interest in the pack. And then you can, you'll can you get a really good feel for it, to be honest, 
pretty quickly is what you like mm. and then the guys can do all the profiling you know when you then order that pack but i mean um yeah uh that's something to just get in touch with tim mm. about and the team it's but... almost, even with mono it's, it's almost a little bit easier kind of because you haven't got all the colors to deal with but you've got all the grays to deal with obviously but you kind of <laughs> it makes it a little bit easier in in terms of paper and things you it, it cuts down the um what's the word the possibilities i suppose a little bit yeah a little bit i think that as a final thought from me then um mm. on on print and on paper and on black and white generally i i know we talked about um you don't necessarily need to have you know the most expensive printers that is true however i'm just going to drop this in since I've I've had this, I, I had access to a, a bigger Canon through the studio that stuff that I work with, but at home I never bothered getting anything particularly high spec just for space reasons. When this Pro Three Hundred uh, came and I started using it for home stuff, so I didn't have to go to the studio and do big prints for, for things. The quality is just a super high cut for me, especially on black and white from that kind of two, three hundred pound print range, you know, that a lot of people have been using and I was using at home. So I think if you can and if you do print a lot and you're interested in making the best prints you possibly can, I, I genuinely I, I, there's nothing in this for me. I don't work for post speed. <laughs> uh, I'm just a photographer, but I genuinely have been super impressed with, with how easy it is to use using that Canon black and white print mode. And the 300 on, on most desks will just about fit and and it will really make amazing prints for you in terms of the paper we, we've said obviously it depends on the image in my own experience the platinum etching does really well and the nst bright white does super well on on snow images and things like that as well but the smooth cotton um also is an is an excellent option if you like the mats what yeah. i've learned from this as a very final thought <laughs> is the gloss art fiber was something i'd never really done much with and i'd heard tim mention it a couple of times in our conversations with photographers and um i've, I've tried a couple from the test pack and i really love that as well it's got that mm -hmm kind of old print feel to it so that's a mm. paper that i suspect a lot of the landscapers don't look at the platinum glass art fiber it's mm. it's it's one to check out for black and white it's got that yeah. nice mix it's a bit it's near the brighter in a way but if if for me it feels a bit denser like there's more density in the whole in everything i've to do with it for me but um it's slightly it. thicker well that's the same grammage it's slightly thicker but for me it just feels like that kind of an old agfa fiber based paper that i used to do using the dark rooms i think that's that's why i like it it's kind of that old nostalgic kind of feel but it also just it just it, yeah it just works really well um, yeah um, it's quite an easy paper to print on as well and just looks great so. yeah nice cool all right tim well i think unless there's any Indeed. other questions yeah. let's let's wrap that up so uh thank you for watching everyone it, do subscribe to the youtube channel uh, and keep out. We've got loads more stuff coming in July. And the final yeah. thing I'm going to say, if you've got any queries uh, about videos you might like to see, we've been putting some survey questions out there into socials asking what you'd like to see from us on the, on the video side of things. So uh, I believe there's somewhere, uh, can people just comment on that, Tim? What's yeah, the best way it's to on, let us know? There's, a, there's actually a thing on Twitter um, and on Instagram um, in the stories. But if, if you have any um, just kind of message us email us or whatever just kind of any suggestions at all um we are more we want to give you what you want really so in a way right. so it's kind of more tutorials and things like that so um but yeah yeah that'd be great yeah, any suggestions please just keep them coming all ears. Cool. <laughs> exactly nice all right well good luck have, ha happy printing everyone keep doing it yeah. it's what the you know getting that print in your hand is what it's all about for me so mm -hmm. uh we would massively encourage that uh, Tim and I will be back for another live in a few weeks, but in between that, there'll be new videos coming out every week, like we say, with tutorials and product reviews and photographer interviews, so lots of inspirational stuff, hopefully. But thank you for joining us, and we shall speak to you all again very soon. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.